Tame Impala is a band that many people, a couple of years ago, whenever the channel was first getting off the ground, really thought that I would probably talk about. Because of my love of psychedelic rock, because of my love of uh, progressive rock, for because of a couple of my other different loves as well. I never did, in fact, I never really listened to much from the group until the middle portion of last year, 2014. And I ended up really loving what I heard. So now that it's 2015, and now that Currents came out, uh, this is an album that I certainly had to speak about. And right off the bat, uh, Kevin Parker indicated that this was an album where he sort of ditched the guitars for the synths, and once they hear Tame Impala played in clubs. And many people are saying that there, uh, and I mean publications, are indicating that there's disco on this album, there's, there's pop on this album, a little bit of synth pop, a little bit of indie pop, a little bit of perhaps psychedelic pop. All the distinctions and shit are kind of nullified, but... Based off of the statements I've already made, you'd think that I wouldn't want to touch this with a 10-foot pole. You'd be wrong, because I like Tame Impala enough to definitely give this album a go. Not to mention I also like those other subsects of music as well, so doubly wrong in that category. Not that I'm taunting. And for any skepticism that I had, and for any sort of uh, problem that I had with this, or, or concern that I had about this, it was a race within the first track anyway, the first eight minutes of this album. In fact, 746, if you really want to be technical about it, with Let It Happen. Uh, Let It Happen was one of the singles that they actually used to kind of herald the album, sort of the John the Baptist of Currents. And I love this, this song because it's an aggressive statement right out of the gate. It's something that I think is underscored and kind of rendered a bit meaningless by the music media a little bit of a group that decides to come out with their longest song first. Like, it doesn't really matter all of that much because you still have a full album to go. I can understand that argument. I really can. But whenever you lead with that foot, that foot has to be one that is firmly implanted on the ground. Uh, one that really is able to move forward, but also creates a great first impression. And Let It Happen really does that. First of all, it establishes exactly what was stated by Kevin Parker from the onset. It does establish the fact that this is more synth-heavy, this is a little bit different of an album than you've heard from uh, the, the first two that this band has been able to put out, uh, Lonerism and Inner Speaker. But also subtly, it also showcases that perhaps one of the funny things is that this musical leap was not all of that far-fetched of an idea whenever you listen to some of the songs off of uh, Inner Speaker and Lonerism. Whenever you sort of hear the musical progression that this band has taken place. Uh, it's one where an album like this only feels natural. Albeit it seems like this is something that would have come a little further down the road, but considering Tame Impala is just a wildly creative bunch, and Kevin Parker kind of does what he wants, then it's not all of that much of a surprise that this is what we hear. Uh, Let It Happen is a tremendous statement. It really is. This is one that combines all different elements uh, of music from the, the soft serenity of just a simple uh, synth beat that has a little bit of an up-tempo to it to a, a little bit of that, that club-friendly ambience to just some regular ambience that actually acts as a transitional element. And whenever you consider, we talked about Happy Song by Bring Me the Horizon, where that sort of rep uh, repeated ambient idea didn't work for that song, this is a song where it works mainly because it leads to something that is worth the wait. It leads to a bit of a jam portion that really accents the end of this track and does so very well. Whereas with Happy Song, uh, the, uh, the transition seemed to lead to nowhere, or at least nothing that was all of that interesting or different from what we were hearing uh, from the first portion of the song. Construction-wise, this is the way that you do it. This is a strong statement, and right out of the gate, it really indicated that this album had something to offer. Whenever you move on in the first half to songs such as Yes, I'm Changing, and eventually you really hear that Kevin Parker is kind of hitting his high notes. He's, and I don't mean that as a vocalist, I mean that more so as a songwriter overall and as an engineer. This is one where uh, the lyricism doesn't have to be a Shakespearean sonnet, nor does it have to be universal ponderings of philosophical quantity, either that or sociological... Uh, you know, sociological observations about how people are all resident dickholes. You know, this, these are simple ideas about about change and about how things sort of evolve or how you no longer want to hurt somebody because you watch 
and have watched what that's done to them. These are simple ideas, and they are, they're insanely relatable for one, and for two, the music that backs it up certainly has the soul and it has the raw power. It has the ability to play with your emotions. It has the ability to really control your emotions, and it makes the album insanely hard to put down. Because every song feels like something that you've experienced in your life that now finally has that soundtrack, that now finally has that one song that sort of explains it very well. The second half of this, uh, of this album really does the same thing. This is not something that's reserved to just the first half. I do love the fact that in the song, Because I'm a Man, uh, we have the strong statements, Because I'm a man, woman. It's, <laughs> whenever you hear it, it almost sounds like he's saying he's a man, woman. But, of course, there's a comma there. Syntax is important, kids. Let me just tell you that. Uh, but I, I, it's kind of funny because that's a statement that... I could almost hear somebody saying in a situation where a, a man's trying to prove himself, either that or uh, it's something that should hopefully, in his mind, lead to a, an encounter of the erotic variety. Uh, either that or he's just trying to showcase that he's got guns, and there's a gun show, and there's tickets being sold, and there's a ticket keeper, and that's him too. Uh, that was really embarrassing, by the way, but who cares? The music accents it beautifully. I, I love the fact that this is an album that really is able to tread the fine line between uh, slowing tra uh, slowing things down and really letting those accents hit home. Another great example of that is uh, uh, Love Paranoia. But um, I also love the fact that whenever it rocks out, it rocks kind of cool. It just has this nice, great flow to it, and it's creative enough and really diverse enough that it's not overly ambitious. It has that nice real balance to it that gives it that that venerable edge. Uh, and then we get to new person, same old mistakes, and it almost feels like the ending of a journey. It seems like this whole entire album has been some sort of spiritual awakening, either that or some sort of transformation within an individual's mind, body, heart, soul, and spirit. Uh, but whenever he or she emerged, I'm going to go with he considering Kevin Parker, uh, it still finds himself making some of the same mistakes, which is a philosophical idea that is very relatable as well. Because it seems as though, no matter how many times we reinvent the wheel of ourselves, we sometimes still fall victim to the same traps that got us whenever we were younger men or before we decided to option to reinvent the wheel of ourselves. This is an album that has that quality to it. I oftentimes speak about albums that make you think a little bit, that give you that option to wax a little philosophical, sociological, psychological, physiological, or universal. And I love to call those thinking man's albums, and this is a thinker's album that has a great emotional register to it that also has the potential to be, uh, that has songs that could potentially be in clubs. So if that was Kevin Parker's goal, then he hit every single one of those goals and did so resplendently. Uh, this is a disc that has a terrific, terrific gathering of tracks to it, and they all have something a little bit more unique to offer. Some may say that this is a synth-heavy idea that gets a little tiresome by the end point, uh, but I really feel that this instrument and this uh, creativity is used in such a way that really keeps your overall interest level in the album at its peak instead of being one that really causes it to waver a little bit. I also feel that these tracks, I would say at least 10 out of the 13 of them are home runs. Absolutely home runs. And, and I feel that that is a, a strong percentage to have, especially in a world where we are seeing a lot of albums within this department that perhaps only have about maybe half of the songs to offer, and in some cases even less, especially whenever you get into the realm of, of synth pop. Uh, because synth pop doesn't mean groups like Tame Impala. Synth pop usually is reserved to your Katy Perry's and your Lady Gaga's that have five singles and a lot of filler. Uh, this is an album, I, wow, strong, bold statement, 89 out of 100. 89 out of 100. This has the potential to be one of the best rock albums, or, or non-metal albums as we call it on this channel of the year. It has the potential, this is a renaissance sounding album that is just as big and is just as bold as has been advertised. But I want to know what you guys think about this album, Tame Impala fans or Tame Impala haters or people who are saying who the fuck is Tame Impala. Let me know what you think. 
about the uh, the album Currents by this group, let me know in the comments below because that's how we can talk and that's how we can build a uh, a real base for these guys. And this is an album that needs to be huge, so. Uh, when, it's one that definitely is, I, I urge you to buy a seal of approval, you know, recommendation, blah, 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 gimmick. Uh, this is one that definitely deserves the purchase. But what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, and we will talk again very, very soon about more music, because it's dangerous to go out in this world by ourselves, alone, without something awesome musically to accompany us. And Tame Palace Currents fits that bill. I'll talk to you later.